Okay, we're supposed to be able to do this here, solve compound inequalities. So let's talk about what compound inequalities are. It says there's two, compound usually means that there are multiple, okay? More than one, it's a compound, okay? When you mix things together, you can make a compound. Or if you have a compound fracture, it means broken more than one place, a bone that's broken in more than one place, compound, compound fracture. Okay, so we're gonna solve for P. Well, this is basically a compound inequality, which means it, it's either this or that. Okay, that's where this word or comes in. So guess what, we gotta solve both sides. So that's not really a big deal, negative nine P minus two. So minus two is less than 16. So I just start by adding two to both sides, right? And now we get negative nine P is less than 18. And then I would divide by negative nine. Divide by negative nine. So this gives me the opportunity to describe to you one of my goofiest drawings that I make, which is this one. Kind of, to me, it looks a little bit like an alien face or something. I don't know. And I don't know what, what got me started on, on drawing this, but I don't know. I think I do it like that. Sometimes I do it the other way. And then I put a little dot on his forehead, give him a little mouth that looks like this. Hold on. Well, I don't like how that, that thing doesn't let me just, uh, yeah. All right, here we go. So what this says, this is a little, this alien face guy or whatever it is, tells me that if I multiply, this is the symbol for multiply, this is the symbol for divide, a negative number on both sides of an inequality, this is the special rule. It says I have to flip my sign. Since I divided this side, let me get another color here to accentuate here. I divided this side by negative nine and I divided this side by negative nine. Now when I simplify, I have P and 18 divided by negative nine is negative two. I have to flip my sign. So instead of saying P is less than negative two, I have to say P is greater than negative two. And then I have all of that just is for this first equation. So then I have a big or statement. And now I'm gonna work on this other problem, eight P plus three, or the other part of this problem, less than 19. So now if I add three to both, oops, I take away three, sorry, that's minus three from both sides. So minus three from both sides. So that this cancels, so 19 minus three is 16. And I get eight P is less than 16. If I divide by eight, uh-oh, do I have to follow my rule? Do I have to follow 16 divided by eight is two. Well, did I multiply or divide a negative number? No, this was a positive eight. So do I need to flip my sign? No, I don't. I divided by positive, don't have to flip my sign. Divide by negative, I do have to fit, flip my sign. So my sign is gonna stay the same. So my answer is P is greater than negative two or P is less than two. P is greater than negative two or P is less than two. And by the way, what would that look like if I had a number line and here is zero and here is two and here is negative two? Well, it's going to be greater than negative two. So I circle here. Don't fill it in because it doesn't say equal to. It's greater than. And I would shade to the right. That's greater than. And then over here, it's less than two. So open circle again, shade in here. So this is my solution graphed. But guess what? Any number that's less than two would work here. And so really I would just keep going. If I put negative two in here, that give me negative 16 plus three, that's negative 13, that is less than 19. And notice that it says or, so either, either of these makes it true. So this is anything less than two, that's everything that direction. So I could go this direction forever into infinity, including negative two. And it says everything greater than negative two, so I can go this way forever in this direction. So it's the entire number line. So we would say this answer is all real numbers. It's all real numbers. Any, any number on the answer line, we, we could plug in and either this one would be true or the other would be true, and in some cases both. But since it's an or statement, we only need one to be true. So all real numbers the answer I got there. Let's try one more like this and then we will get you moved on to another problem set. Again, we are doing compound inequalities. So here we go. 
see I get another fresh page for this and we'll put that there kind of blow it up just a little bit okay so basically we're just doing the same thing but this time it's an and statement so it's only the areas that are true for both when we look at the number line we should see that both of them are true so let's do this one first right here this is 2p plus 2 less than 8 so I'm going to take away 2 from both sides it gives me 2p these cancel is less than 8 minus 2 is 6 divide by 2 and I get p is less than 3 so there's one answer p is less than 3 and Let's get the other side in here, get green in. We go 8p minus 3 greater than 13. So if I add 3 to both sides, I get 8p is greater than 16. Divide by 8, both sides, I get p is greater than 2. So p is less than 3 and p is greater than 2. So there we have it right there. p is less than 3 and p is greater than 2. If you looked at that on a number line, there is 2, there is 3. We want to be less than 3, so I circle 3 and go to the left. And we want to be greater than 2, so I circle 2 and go to the right. So it's just this area in here that is both and. Now this is another one that if it said or, I would just say, oh, well, all of these numbers fit one of the criteria. So I could go this way forever and it would fit this criteria less than three. And I go that way and it would fit this criteria of greater than two. And if it was or, then it would be the entire number line because any of those numbers would be either greater than two or less than three. But this is an and statement. It means that both have to be true. This has to be true and this has to be true. This is a compound inequality where both have to be true, so we're just looking at the areas in between and the and statement, and there it is. So let's go ahead and take that one there. Okay, see if there's anything different or unusual about this. No, nope, pretty much the same thing. I can see right here, this says divide by, I'm gonna have to divide by a negative, so don't forget to flip your sign. Always look and see, is it an and or an or? It's always a good idea once you solve these equations to graph them out on the number line and make sure you really see them well. Okay, that's my tips for doing these problems here.